A man was arrested after opening a store that sells heroin, cocaine, and meth. A gang was arrested for selling fake glasses that showed people naked. And a dangerous rabbit has bitten several residents in Iowa. These are the weird stories for Thursday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian inside a hot closet in Los Angeles. Let's do it. A man was arrested after opening up a cocaine, heroin, and meth store. Sounds like a lovely place. Do they have a rewards program? (laughs) I'm just kidding. I don't condone these chemicals, man. They alter your senses, and we know we can't have that. We want our senses to be on point, especially when you want to take in the world as it is, because it's just a wonderful place. Why (laughs) Why alter your senses? Just take it all in, guys. Take it all in. We got a guy named Jerry Martin. Jerry Martin claims that he opened this drugs store in order to give people access to a safe supply of fentanyl-free drugs. How about that? I love a person who is trying to make it safer out there to take your recreational drugs, making sure that they are fentanyl-free, because as you know, fentanyl has caused a lot of death and destruction, especially in the United States, but it's happening all over the world as people are lacing all sorts of chemicals with fentanyl for some reason. I don't understand what that what that is. If you're a drug dealer, why do you want your clients dead? Uh, that oh, seems like bad business practice. That's like business 101. Don't murder your clients. All right, so this guy's intentions were good, but it sounds like uh, maybe his approach wasn't so smart. You can't just uh, go open up a store and be like, hey, come and get your fentanyl-free meth. Let's keep reading. The Vancouver individual named Jerry, who opened a store selling heroin, meth, cocaine, and MDMA, was arrested less than 24 hours after launching the business. What a surprise. (laughs) Yeah, the police drove by and saw a large sign that was like, Grand opening! Get your molly! Fentanyl free! First gram free. Jerry Martin opened the drugs store, a mobile app. Oh, it was an app in the... Oh, no, I'm sorry, a mobile shop. It's a pop-up drug shop. (laughs) It's a pop-up meth shop. Hilarious. He opened it in the downtown east side, a neighborhood that's been ravaged by the overdose epidemic. He said he wanted to give people a safe supply of drugs that had been tested to ensure they didn't contain fentanyl. The Vancouver police said yesterday that they arrested a man for drug trafficking, quote, in connection with an illicit drug dispensary that began operating yesterday in the downtown east side area. The police say they started gathering evidence, quote, after the suspect started selling cocaine, crack, methamphetamine, and heroin out of a mobile trailer parked near Maine and Cordova streets. So he started with a mobile trailer. That got them suspicious. And then he's opened up a pop-up shop, and that, that was when they're like, no, 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 you can't have a brick and mortar for this crack store. He sold crack too. <laughs> I don't recommend selling crack, but I guess, I don't know, some people, that's, I guess that's some people's drug of choice. Here's a quote from the constable. She said, uh, we support measures aimed at improving public safety for people who use drugs, including harm reduction services and decriminalization. However, we remain pretty committed in our position that drug trafficking will, um, of course, continue to be the subject of enforcement. So. Now, Jerry's business consisted of, well, a store, of course, uh, and a lot of uh, drugs. He had some bright yellow sandwich boards featuring a price list for all the drugs. Let me just put them on the sidewalk here. Oh, crack. Two for one. How nice. I should go in. Um, The drugs ranged from $10 for a point, which is one-tenth of a gram of meth, to $250 for two and a half grams of crack. Martin wore a stab-proof vest as he sold the drugs from behind a plexiglass window inside the shop. Um, Said that he wanted to stay close to street prices, so that was... (laughs) I love this guy on some level, I really do. I mean, pretty dumb, but, uh, you know, his heart's in in the right place. He's very brave as well. Now, it turns out... um, Martin also had some ulterior motives. He told Vice that his plan was to get arrested eventually anyway. He said he wants to launch a constitutional challenge, arguing that prohibition has created a toxic drug supply that's killing Canadians. Uh, Martin was inspired to open the store also by his stepbrother named Gord, who died of a drug overdose last year. Now, the police say that 
They haven't specified if there's any charges against Martin, but he is banned from returning to the downtown east side area. So, uh, Well, I don't know. What do you think of this guy who's just trying to make drugs safe for us all leading into the weekend? Is this a terrible thing to do? Does he deserve to, to be jailed over this? Call the show, 646-450-2012. A gang was arrested for selling fake glasses that, quote, showed people naked. This story is from India. Chennai. Did I say that correctly? A gang of four had put on sale some spectacles. They were selling spectacles, claiming they would help the wearer see through clothing. This gang landed in jail. They were arrested from a hotel in a place I cannot pronounce. The police say the gang targeted rich businessmen. Also, rich, stupid businessmen, I assume, if you're buying some glasses, when someone tells you they're going to, you can see people through the clothes with these glasses. Do do you try them out before you buy them? Uh, Police say the gang targeted these businessmen, showing them videos of how the spectacles worked, offering to take them to a secret location to try them out. So they were sold online, it sounds like. Police were investigating the gang's claims to have sold three pairs in Bangalore, 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 Bangalore. Bengaluru. That sounds like a dance. Do you guys uh, do you guys know how to do the Bengaluru? Uh, you put on these glasses first, and, and then you twerk, and it allows you to see the, through the clothing of other twerkers. Okay. Uh, they sold three pairs by getting models to pose nude in a darkened room. <laughs> no, they did not. Oh, my goodness. Uh, they get the customer, so they had models pose nude in a room where the customers would be allowed to wear the spectacles. They come in this room, put these glasses on. Now walk into the room. You see the ladies? See how you, they're, they, are they, do they look naked? To me, they look like they're wearing business suits. What do you see? Oh, you see naked? Okay, it looks like they work. Okay, step outside. Let's negotiate. <laughs> he had fake nude models pose in a dark room. Oh, this is unbelievable, man. I mean, to think that this idea would work. Well, I mean, they sold three pairs, it sounds like. So it worked on some dummies. <laughs> Did they also try and sell a fake time machine? Where they're like, step into this room. Look at, is it, it looks like it's from 1880, right? Right? <laughs> After they hired a bunch of people to dress like the 1880s. <laughs> I can't believe the scams that people come up with. The lengths that they'll go to. It's just easier to get a job, man, at this point. I mean, all this work. Come on, man. Just get a job. Maybe there's no jobs in bingaloo roo Now, the police say... This gang, which included a Bengaluru-based businessman, was also planning to con other people in the city by offering to sell them a rice-pulling vessel that would bring them prosperity. Police say the scamsters claimed this vessel was made of copper and iridium and had special powers as it had been struck by lightning. (laughs) This was struck by lightning. It'll bring you fortune. Uh, They give a rundown of who's in the gang, ages 39, 37, 24, 21. All three got caught after the police raided their hotel room on a complaint from a local trader. That's uh, good that they've caught these guys before they try and sell some sort of fake teleportation device. (laughs) All right, all right, touch the button. All right, now walk into this room. It looks like Mars, right? You just teleported to Mars, buddy. (laughs) That'll be 50 quid. Yay! Would you like to easily create and distribute a podcast everywhere, even earn money all in one place for free? Well, try Spotify for podcasters. Record and edit on your phone or computer. You can send it to Spotify and everywhere podcasts are heard. They even have video podcasting options as well. Spotify for podcasters allows you to earn money with ads and subscriptions. Best of all, it's free. Try it. Download Spotify for podcasters or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your life, man. A dangerous rabbit is biting residents in Iowa, Perry, Iowa. A resident told the media she was one of at least two people bitten by a rabbit. Roman Rustin says the rabbit jumped up and bit her and then it hopped over to the neighbor's house. It came around her car, she says. Wouldn't let her out of the car. She called the police on the rabbit. The police say this rabbit has been around terrorizing people for at least a week. It's bitten several residents in Perry, Iowa. My goodness, this rabbit is dangerous and deadly. Oh, that's no ordinary rabbit. 
Look at he's got very sharp, pointy teeth. Look at the sharp, pointy teeth. Look at all the bones. I thought it was appropriate for a Monty Python reference. I mean, why not go there? Uh, there's a report of a 13-year-old girl also bitten by the rabbit in the neighborhood. She's going to be getting a rabies shot. Now, Rustin, who says she's a nurse, she's not planning on getting a rabies shot. She says, well, I'm not worried about any rabies because when, it, when the rabbit bit me, I didn't see it frothing at the mouth. <laughs> frothing at the mouth. Yeah, that's not the only sign of rabies. If you're bitten by anything in the wild, you might want to consider getting that rabies shot. A squirrel, a, a possum, a rabbit, a muskrat, a, a Komodo dragon. If a Komodo dragon bites you, go get that rabies shot. They're everywhere over here in Southern California, by the way. you got to watch out for those Komodo dragons. Thankfully, we don't have these deadly rabbits, though. This would scare the crap out of me. And as you know, there's only one way to kill a dangerous rabbit, and that's the holy hand grenade of Antioch. <laughs> Yes, of course, the holy hand grenade of Antioch. Tis one of the sacred relics Brother Maiden carries with him all the time. Oh, good news, guys. I, I found a follow-up story right here that says the uh, police caught this dangerous bunny. And they took it to the city's wastewater treatment plant where it was released. <laughs> you mean dumped? <laughs> dumped into some wastewater? Maybe it's a strange place to take a, a dangerous bunny. Well, they it, This is the Perry police. They know what they're doing. Says here the rabbit has not been seen in Perry since. Yeah, that's right, because they killed the damn thing. Police don't know if the rabbit has rabies, they report. Uh, rabies is extremely rare in Iowa, apparently. In 2022, the state reported only 11 cases of rabbit animals, and they were all bats. Ooh, it's at times like this, I'm so grateful I don't live in a rural area. You know, I, I'm a city guy. I don't live in the forest. Sounds very dangerous. You could get gnawed on by the, the local critters. It's very scary. Instead, I live in constant fear that I'm going to be bit on the shin by a crackhead <laughs> in downtown Los Angeles. Eh, six of one, half dozen of the other. Yay! Hey, what's up, weirdos? Thanks for spending some time with me on this episode of Weird AF News. It was a doozy. Uh, tomorrow's Friday, so you know we're only going to be doing weird news out of the state of Florida. If you're new to the show on Friday, we only do weird news from Florida. We call it Florida Fridays, and it's the jam. Everybody loves it. So send me Florida stories if you come across any. You can email me funnyjones at gmail.com or you can drop them in my Instagram DMs at funnyjones as well. Many people do that. I always love to hear from listeners as well. Call the show if you'd like, 646-450-2012 if you'd like to express yourself. And uh, lastly, if you'd like to support the show, Go to my website, weirdafnews.com, the official website of Weird AF News, where you can uh, buy Jonesy a coffee or you can join the Patreon as well. Good way to support the show. And um, yeah, excited about, about tomorrow. So reach out to me if you got something. And I'm uh, looking forward to it. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, okay, bye-bye-bye.